guys and welcome back to another video so i'm not sure how long it's been since i've actually done a kind of more real time video where i'm actually doing a watercolor painting um but like i usually do i will leave a five minute condensed version which will be a time lapse which will have basically the whole process of this but just really sped up um this video will be more like a real time but more like chunks of footage i guess but i know a lot of you guys enjoy real-time footage but if you're not then i'll leave the five minute version in the description um before we start as you can see i accidentally didn't hit record for the background painting process i just spent a lot of time just wetting the page and then adding a bunch of different colors i did do kind of like a brief painting in my sketchbook just to plan out colors and it didn't turn out the way I wanted to so I guess maybe it's not too bad of a thing that it didn't get recorded but um for the skin so I like to start painting the face usually and that usually entails the skin so for this I decided to put a, a light base of my kind of like my first wash and then I slowly build up the shading any kind of like warmth in the face like blush or just any warmer areas of the face shadows and stuff all at the same time first and I usually gradually get warmer and then usually my top layer for the shadows tends to be a lot cooler so today I am painting coaching and I don't know I really love her outfit I think her new outfits really pretty i wish i had coaching and i guess even if i did i don't really pay for skins i'm trying my best to stay um f2p but also just, i don't really want to spend money on um gotcha games in general so uh i guess i will never get coaching skin but that's okay i still can really admire it it's just really pretty and i like the blue and the black and the purple of her outfit it's just really pretty on her so yeah um for the skin or painting in general so let's talk about painting in general first i am painting on hot press paper which has been the paper that i've been enjoying the most recently is this the result of it, it's very just smooth and easy for me to blend out the colors as well as just plan things out nicely i was able to apply wet on wet quite easily you can see that when i was working with the skin under her chin i kind of applied a peachish rosy tinge of a color and then I slowly put in kind of a purpley blue into there and because it's wet on wet it kind of disperses the blue right into that previous color because of the wet surface so it was just easier for me to work on and I felt very familiar working on it so yeah I had no like I had no real issues painting this time I just had a lot of fun working on this so yeah for the most part I think the final result I actually really like and considering I feel it very rusty painting and I say this um, I don't know how to explain this uh the recent paintings that I've done for videos where you kind of see like little snippets and I think this is mostly for like the review videos I've done I think I've done it for um Artex and Magic Fly and those paintings tend to be a little bit smaller, a little bit less ambitious. I'm just trying out the paints and stuff, but for something like this, I like to take my time and really plan and try to flesh stuff out. Um, even right here, you can see that once I've done painting the majority of her skin, I'm going to have to do a little bit of touch-ups because I, usually when I paint the skin, it's usually set at a certain value first until I get the surrounding colors done then i can gauge whether or not i need to bring the skin color or the skin tone or the just the hue of it if i need to make it warmer or cooler or if i have to make it darker because i just need a base first and then we can adjust as we go i did my best to kind of bleed in the skin tone into her hair first and then i'm taking my time painting in her hair but leaving the edges very transparent so that we can keep the skin tone kind of like throughout her hair just to make it a little bit softer i always love that look um, and it's something i do often when i'm doing digital work is that if i can i like to bleed the skin tone right into the hair as long as it fits like mm, i feel like if i'm painting like white hair i feel like it's a little harder because sometimes it tint like tints the hair a little bit too much towards um one or like, come on, how am I explaining this? I don't know. I feel like certain situation, I can bleed this 
skin color nicely into the hair because I feel like paler hair with the skin tone is a little bit tricky for me but I feel like if it's darker um, hair with the skin tone tends to work fine like I love doing it with like really dark brown hair or like really um, dark kind of like blackish hair or like navy blue I like bleeding in the skin tone into the hair it just makes everything look softer around the face if I can so yeah um, so for the most part when I'm working for painting I like to use wet on dry if I want more solid areas but for the initial few washes that I do I like doing wet on wet um, or just even like just letting two little sections of wet paint kind of mix together or like wet washes and then you can get different colors to interact really nicely and if I'm too scared to let the watercolor or like the paint to be a little bit more spontaneous I will do the same way where I let the skin tone bleed into the hair where I will put kind of like a darker color in a certain area and then slowly drag the color down or into the lighter color or like the color that I want to bleed into just because if I can make it more transparent as we move closer to the other color it kind of looks more like a seamless blend so yeah you can see it right here so I'm laying down a kind of like a grayish purple first with the brush and then with a cleaner brush I'm dragging it downwards towards your face and hopefully that creates a little bit of a softer look but also I can let some of that color pop through into the purple um but yeah you'll see me use more of like wet on wet more towards her hair when I start to darken things up like right here you can see I'm using a little bit more wet on wet um, because I'm trying to transition the right side of her hair to be a little bit more cooler with blues and then as we shift towards the left um, it's more like pale a little bit more white because I wanted to have a brighter light there and I don't know I just like the look of wet on wet like I said, if you want a little bit more spontaneity, this is a great way, but I feel like if you let it sit for long enough, you can still get a lot of control. So, hmm. I recorded like the voiceover, I think three times up till this point. I never could get past the 10 minute part because my program kept crashing. So hopefully this will work out and I don't have to re-record. Maybe I should stop it and save it, but I don't know. We'll, we'll just continue. So for the background, I don't know if I mentioned this. So I was basically working wet on wet for the background the entire time, just like letting the colors bleed into one another. I used most, like mostly a yellowish base and then I added light blue, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of pink. And it kind of made like a bluish green background with a little bit of pops of yellow. And it looked really pretty. Um, I was kind of debating whether or not I wanted to go more of a dark background with spots that were very light. Or I wanted to go with entirely light background. And after playing around... I settled for the lighter background with the possibility of adding darker colors but letting the lighter color like pop through. So I've done this before but I've used like masking fluid to do this and I haven't used masking fluid in like a few years since my other batch um, kind of, I don't know, I didn't store it properly. I don't know if this is gonna help but if you have masking fluid that's in one of those little containers like those little cylindrical containers i heard that people said that you should always store it upside down so that the i think it's like the what's it called the masking fluid itself won't solidify by the time when you turn it over and actually start to use it but i haven't used it in i don't know i bought it during third year of uni and then I've used it up until, I think I used it for three years. I didn't use the whole thing, but by the third year, because of me improperly storing it, it basically solidified and it's basically like a gum. So once it dries, you can't like reactivate it and it's unusable, but it's definitely a great way if you're doing kind of like softer, delicate details where you don't want paint to, like to touch it. So two ways that I like to use it is one if you already know where you want white details to be on your painting then you would apply that first before painting any washes and stuff and then you can preserve that white of the page um, another way is that if you add washes beforehand let it dry and then add 
your masking fluid on top and then add darker washes on top you can get a really nice um kind of like difference in depth and stuff i've done it before i don't really how like how to explain it but yeah i don't know if i have pictures of it if i can find it i know i have a wanu piece that has something similar where i've kind of did like a floral or indication of like a floral silhouette in the background using the masking fluid um but that's like if you trust your masking fluid i know like some masking fluids work really well on certain papers i've used masking fluid on my cold press papers in the past where the texture was not or not the texture my paper i think at the time was not like 100 percent cotton so it didn't have like those little fibers and i guess like the masking fluid just sat on top so when i was peeling it it peeled off nicely but when i put it onto like my higher quality um watercolor paper where it's like 100 percent cotton it has like those little fibers on top it kind of like gripped the paper so when you peel it it basically ripped the paper so if you had like washes underneath you're basically gonna have one ripped paper and then two it's probably gonna be white rather than whatever wash you had like underneath i don't know i'm on like a whole rambling about watercolor i don't know if you guys can tell i really miss painting i really do and i think because i had good results with the coaching piece um i want to paint more i really do but i kind of want to make sure i can get back into a balance of doing traditional and digital art um yeah i don't know i don't know what i'm doing also i don't know by the time you guys see this video hopefully i am back to streaming i'm not too sure i am thinking of streaming on the 15th and i think you guys see this video on the 16th so i don't think this is gonna be very helpful another thing was like when i was painting coaching i uh, i don't know if it's like my computer screen or my phone screen or my laptop so basically all of them have like different color screens so like my phone's super warm my tablet's like i want to say it's like the neutral zone of color and then my laptop's like overly like a little bit too saturated a little bit on the cooler side but I kept swapping where my reference was so sometimes i have it on my tablet screen sometimes i have it maybe i should just open it on my ipad now that i'm thinking about it um but sometimes i view it on my phone and it's super warm but like coaching's purples on her outfit sometimes they read more blue and sometimes they read more light like a purple with more of a pinky or like reddish tone into it so i was definitely having issues balancing it out i think i have the colors incorrect but at least they look pretty i guess um yeah but okay here's like where you guys are gonna see most of my wet on wet technique now for me it was kind of like a bit of a gamble oh i guess i moved on um so i have some pigments like watercolor that are a little bit more opaque so i just mixed it a little bit and decided that i wanted to add a little bit more color back into her eyes because i forgot to leave a little bit of a space for the color to bleed in because i i do this a lot digitally i like to leave kind of like the opposite side of the eye where the highlight is i like to leave that side to introduce another color that's usually present in the piece just to add a little bit more variation into the eyes as well as kind of like tying the overall color scheme together um but yeah in terms of wet on wet like i said i was mostly using it for i used it part for her hair and the outfit and then a lot for the flowers so when i was doing the flowers i actually added a yellow base first to the inside and then i kind of feathered it out but while it was still wet, I decided to add a darker yellow just to get that center a little bit more um, vibrant. And now you can see that I'm adding some colors for the petals. And I think at some point, I don't know if I do the front petals first or after. I really don't remember how I approached this, but I started to add darker colors to like the little edges. I guess I did the back ones first and I'm doing my darndest to kind of use a cleaner brush or cleaner tip of the brush to kind of let the colors bleed into the yellow because i don't want the yellow to get too lost but you can see the wet on wet you can create like kind of create these little harder edges but also letting it kind of feather out i really like that texture i'm just too nervous to leave things too spontaneous i always like having control so that's like something i really want to work on in the future 
Um, but this is a great way to introduce color into your washes. It's just basically once you have a wet wash, you can kind of just like let the brush touch the surface of the wet paper and then you can watch it kind of just spread out and you can definitely get some really nice um, kind of like kind of like seamless blending because of how the water works and like I said if you let it dry for a little bit then you can get a little bit of harder edges and that's really helpful um, otherwise you can do wet on dry like I'm doing here and take a clean brush and just basically pull the pigments towards the other side of wherever you want it to be and kind of get a different look and that really helps. I'm not the best in terms of one explaining but two I don't know my knowledge for watercolor for me at least I feel like it's quite limited but I feel like a lot of mediums require testing and experimentation rather than like an explanation um, so I tried my best to I don't know, kind of keep the form and stuff, but also trying to focus on value and the use of color. I was trying to not mix too much of like a monochromatic black. I was trying to add a little bit of purple and then in some cases I'll add a little bit of blue. Um, and kind of like the same thing goes for like Ko Ching's hair. So I think I was looking at Game's fashion archive for the model so I could see the full thing of her outfit but then when I was looking at her hair her hair is actually quite purpley gray but I was trying to add other colors into her hair just to, because I don't know I like vibrancy quite a bit I think you guys know that I really like to play with color a little bit in terms of um vibrancy and kind of kind of like dabbling into introducing new colors into certain things like if I can I would like to add color into opposite portions of the hair like if you have brown hair I'll try to add purples and blue to make it a little bit cooler and push it back a bit kind of like that but I wasn't too overly ambitious with that in terms of painting coaching's hair just because watercolor for me is a little bit scary if I don't plan it out like I said I'm not very good with like spontaneous painting um, but yeah, I was trying to add a little bit more blue and purple back into her hair because I don't want it to get too lost. Also, while I was editing this, like the footage anyways, not the voiceover, I was like wondering to myself, when was it that I was going to add in her eyebrows? I was talking to my brother and saying like how figures and people kind of look weird. If you don't have your teeth or you don't have your eyebrows, especially both together, I don't know why it looks quite off-putting. I think it's mostly eyebrows because eyebrows are very expressive and they kind of help frame your face a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was just worried. Like I knew I added eyebrows at some point, but just when? But I guess I added it just before I decided to do the line art. Um, so for materials, I hopefully I make sure to add the materials into the description, but I used three different brushes this time. So I used my old Raphael Kalinsky number no. six round for the majority of the painting um, because I like to do more big washes also because this brush is a little bit more damaged and no longer holds its point. I don't really care about mixing paint so like aggressively so i try to do my bigger washes with that and then i switch to my new brush uh, which is the let me see Raphael precision it's a number six round as well but it keeps its point much better than the current one that i have because of how beaten up it is now but that's the one i'm using right now is the the new one which is the precision but you can see i can get a little bit more finer lines and a little bit more control so that's what i needed um i'll switch brushes again to the i think this is the food a the pentel food a brush or something like designed food a brush and the reason why i'm using that was because i was going to use it for detailing i know it's great for like more of a script liner or for detailing and stuff but i used it to add some extra accents to her dress as well as her hair and her eyes a little bit later so we'll get to that literally in a couple of minutes but for now um i don't know i feel like i work in a very inefficient way so 
usually when working on stuff this is just usually like this is not like a surefire way to work on stuff it's just something that's recommended and it does for the most part help is to work general to specific and i kind of do that and i kind of don't i kind of flip-flop so like i said when i work on the face i like to go really into painting the face because for me the face kind of makes or breaks the piece um, but you can see that when I was painting this one, I kind of avoided the eyes for a little bit. I tried to make sure that I painted indication of like, I think the bust where like her dress was and then I painted her hair and then I went in to do her eyes. But now you can see that after I kind of did mostly like the base coloring for everything, I went and did the line work for the face, the eyes and the hair surrounding her face. And then I went back and doing the other elements. So. Yeah, I kind of work general to specific and then I work backwards. I kind of just flip-flop in between because sometimes I need... I think this is a personal issue. Um, I need validation, I guess, from myself that the piece is going well. And one of the final steps that I like doing is actually doing the line work. But uh, I decided to do it in the middle just because, you know, I kind of want to see what it looks like with the line work. So that's what I did. And it's because... It's just kind of like validation for myself that I know I can do. Um, but yeah, I know it would be like probably a lot more satisfying if I did all the line work at the end though. You can watch it slowly come to life, but I don't know. I really needed the face to come forward first so I can see it. Um, but I think in the future, I would like to paint more with this pad. Like I said, um, this pad is sealed on- hopefully I said this, I don't know which voiceover I mentioned this, but this pad is sealed on- actually, it's sealed on all sides except for the left side where there's like a middle strip. You'll see it at the very end, I'll make note of it. Um, that's like exposed, it's not like gummed together or anything, and that's like allowing you to stick some kind of tool or- a exacto knife or blade inside so you can cut the way the glue from the edges and allow it to basically unseal itself from the whole block but using the block I think is really helpful it's just harder for me to transfer sketches so for this one I legit had to just sketch right onto the paper which is super nerve-wracking because I don't want to damage the paper by overly ex like excessive erasing uh, but I think that's about it. I've done probably way more rambling than I needed to and kind of just me gushing about wanting to watercolor a little bit more. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video and watching me paint coaching today. I want to get back into painting a lot more. I always said this and I never did. So hopefully this is kind of the push I needed to get back into watercolor painting. And this is the little thing I was talking about where you can insert your knife and then cut away at the gum edges. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Um, bye!